Hi, everybody. Who's watching? Who's watching now? Let's see. Hey, everybody. Oh. We're about to go live with Chris Graves right now. Hey, there he is. What's up? Hey, Chris, how's it going? Okay, how are you doing? Really good. This is, um, well, aside from our trial one last week, this is the first time I've done this, so I'm kind of excited. Yeah, it's super awkward, isn't it? Should I do that to mine? Um, what do you mean, that to mine? Am I sideways? Yeah, you're sideways. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Should we, I mean, it's a square, so I don't think it matters. I'm going to go back to the, I just didn't know if this thing could do vertical. We're about to find out, so let's see. All right, let's see. This is going to confuse our YouTube watchers later. Uh, yeah, well, okay. uh, maybe I'll just do a quick uh, intro while we're getting set up. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Amanda. I am the membership and gallery manager at Blue Sky. I also run the social media accounts. Um, and then we are starting this new interview series, I guess, t digitally specifically, because we typically host them live in the gallery every month for First Thursday. So we're excited to be able to use this platform and hope that we have a lot of watchers. It looks like a lot of folks have tuned in. I see, oh, Hero, a lot of artists we've shown before, too. This is cool. Um, my mom is watching. Thank you, Mom. And Everybody's me Yeah, tonight. this is wonderful. So today we're talking with Chris Graves, who um, is just one of my favorite Blue Sky alum. We showed his work, The Testament Project, in 2016. I have the book right here. This is the monograph. Um, it's beautiful. We, I think we actually have a few left at the gallery for oh, sale, just FYI. Get them fast because I'm going to call tomorrow. I think they're rare. They're rare. So, yeah. They're um, out. <laughs> they're gone. So, Chris is a photographer, but he's also a publisher running Chris Graves Projects who, and supporting just tons of photographers, um, including Raina Young. Look at me. Hey, I see Raina's in here, too. Yeah. You, you're, you're representing. I dig it. I have them handy. They're some of my favorites. They're in my bookshelf right there. Yeah, so we make a bunch of books. We, we've we been a publishing company for uh, five or six years now, like five years pretty much. So in that time, we've probably made about uh, 85 books or something. It's stupid. That's just <laughs> so many. You're just always working on something, I know. Um, yeah, so how are you doing? How are you holding up right now? Uh, okay, uh, you know, it's the first, this is actually the first time I've done a Instagram live kind of, so um, it's good to see what the, the problems may be or something like that, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. It's weird. Um, I'm up on uh, Cape Cod with my wife and her family house, or we're the only people here, but um, nice. leaving New York City was weird and, you know, not weird. It's kind of like I felt bad to leave the city. Yeah. For some reason, I wanted to like stick it out at home, but but it made more sense to come out here and just have some space. We can walk around. We can go to the beach, um, which is very cool. Even though it's not not very warm, it's still nice to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've been up here since I think two months now. It's crazy. Time it's, has time is crazy. It's really wild. Yeah, I agree. It's been uh, the first month March just dragged on forever, and then since then it's gone by so fast. We've gotten really used to things, I guess. Yeah, um, everything changed out there with the gallery, right? It's been, yeah, I mean, we've taken everything digital, which is we're lucky to have that platform kind of already established. So mm -hmm. uh, I think this is just a good way for us to get out there to people who can't normally come down to to downtown Portland or who normally are, like, not inclined to do that for a lot of reasons. The 99.9% .9 of everyone <laughs> else in the world. Yeah, right. So this is, like, <laughs> obviously a way different format, but um, this is cool. So I had some questions for you just to start, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, I just, um, I guess I'm just curious. I don't know. Actually, do you want to start from um, backwards or forwards? Oh, I don't care. Whatever you want. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just really curious. I've known you now for a while and you just, you're such a go-getter. You've always got a thousand ideas, just like ready to go. And I'm wondering if you've always been like this, like, what were you like as a child? <laughs> I played a lot of video games and or actually I watched people play video games because some of them are like super scary and shit like Resident <laughs> Evil actually is scary. Yeah. I'm not trying to play that. 
but I I definitely watched my play. Uh, the childhood was not like this. I wasn't a I was a lazy ass student throughout all the schools. I mean, I did. It's not like I was a good student in college or anything. I just was a photographer, so it was easy to skate by unnoticed. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's for, you know, like a lazy video games, drink with my friends, uh, and like drink too much because I have no tolerance. So that <laughs> happened a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't, this stuff, I mean, I got really busy after, I think after college ended, I got really serious and tried to keep my people together, like some sort of community mm -hmm. in this world, because I realized that if we had no community, we, we wouldn't really have anything when we're old. I still want, like, I want friends when I'm old, you know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Are you still friends with your college chums? Absolutely. Nice. And, the, you know, we work with each other on a lot of things. Yeah. Um, like my friend Luke, who is the, he's designing the cover for, our, he designs our books, the Not Wrong series, which is this tiny, like, periodical series. Not tiny, it's like huge, it's like 20 by 24 inches. But, um, um, so yeah, we, we keep it, like, purchase college out, man. We, like, we're, we're a crew for real. Like, yeah. we, we, we rep each other hard. As You're going to go we. down in the art history books, like Black Mountain College. Dude. Purchase College, ain't nobody got shit on us, man. I mean, maybe maybe Yale. <laughs> oh, that's true. They're tough competition, I think. They've got a, they've got a I look. Still, I would still put my all my money on Purchase College for the win that's over right. you. I shouldn't say shit like that on like my first like live shit. I should not say stuff like that, but um, whatever. This is a good trial run. <laughs> that's cool. So when did you pick up a camera for the first time? Like how long have you been photographing? Um... I think my parents didn't allow me to get a camera. It was probably like in, uh, in uh, when I was a junior in high school or a sophomore in high school, my parents, uh, I told my parents that I did not want to do anything besides art. I, really, I wanted to, photography was the art that I thought could make me a living out of all the other arts that I was learning. So I was like, yeah, photography is it. And um, my parents didn't get me a camera for like a year and a half. But after that year and a half, they did get me one. And then I had a darkroom class in my high school, which is, super fortunate in Long Island, Westbury, Long Island. That's we had a dark room. It was kind of amazing. I mean, yeah. uh, and I spent a lot of time in that dark room. So um, just learning really shitty. I mean, so you look at those pictures, it's like, oh, so shitty. But, uh, <laughs> That's but <funny. laughs> where I was, yeah, so I was like in high school when I started, when I picked up a old ass manual camera and then went to college at Purchase and met some of the like great professors, um, people that were doing really weird, you know, not inter interesting parts of photography. Like most photography colleges have like you know, all this stuff, but we had the like color darkroom, black and white darkrooms, non-silver. Wow. You know, I was working early on the computer, and that was like 2000, 2000. Turn of the century. <laughs> that was two thousand. So I was like, I got a printer that first year and started to learn how to digitally print in two thousand. Um, wow. Using like, you know, you do, I don't know if you remember all those like black and white ink kits that you used to put in the old Canon or some shit. Like it had like only black inks. Yeah. Like it took all the colors out and it was, all, anyway. This gradient. That's yeah. Cool room, actually. I bet that's still something, but. Um, I bet anyway, it is. Blue I will, camera here. You, me, you, you, I will just do this. You, <laughs> you're going to have to stop me from. No, that's uh, good. I, I, cause it did, took, it brought me tangentially to another question, which is I've been talking with some other artists who have been using this like quarantine downtime, downtime, trapped inside time to like really dig into their own archives, um, including going back to like high school photos. And I'm wondering if you've been doing that. Have you been like digging deep into your own personal stuff? I did. I started to do that. And then I got so bored real quick. <laughs> okay. I did it for like a few days. I went back because I have all these, you know, I scanned all my old negatives from high school cool. uh, on just like sheets. Like, so they're like a, a whole uh, contact sheet, but scanned. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I went through and I, I tried, but <laughs> it's just like the world does not need my high school photographs right now. It needs, it definitely needs like something real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you do, yeah. you do photograph the real, the very real. Um, Wow, we could go there right now too, just because it's important. <laughs> but yeah, well, it's, everything's changing now. The yeah. whole world is like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Where are we doing? What's next? Um, can we have photo jobs anymore? Yeah. 
can we have are there galleries are there going to be galleries or will there be i mean museums will exist but what does that mean for a photographer there's a lot of questions there are there are definitely more questions than answers at this point uh, mm -hmm. it has been interesting for me to look to like listen to see what people are focusing on um in their artistic practice too like if it's going back and through your archive or if it's like using this time to experiment with new modes of photography that you wouldn't normally mm. mess with. Um, are you doing any of that experimentation? Not, not with my own artwork. I have an idea for a book project that's maybe coming uh, in the fall or next year. I think next year, because the fall's out. I mean, there's nothing happening in the fall this year. That's so like true. next year, we're the book. Yeah. Um, but I've been trying to do that through the press, like mm -hmm. uh, working with, artists that I haven't worked with before and just trying to build some kind of new momentum and trying to change the power, change the system, not the system, but change the way I, I am in the system. I, I don't know what all this means. I'm just trying to figure it all out. Yeah. So like we have little projects coming out that are kind of funky, pretty inexpensive to buy because I just want to see if there's a, a different model for yeah. people you know, that, you know, I don't have money. I can't really buy a 50, I can't really buy like a $65 photo book, but that shit is yeah. out. I don't have money for that. So um, I'm trying to make good products for like kind of inexpensive. And it's like a lot of talking to presses, a lot of um, just being in interest, like how big is the piece of paper? How many times can I fold that on a press? Wow. And how small is that outcome? And can I still make something good that's four by six inches or something like that? You know, like just trying to figure it all out. So um, yeah. yeah. Let's um let's give some of our listeners or audience who don't know all about Chris Graves project just a little bit of a backstory on that. Like when uh when did you launch it, and what was the in what was your inspiration? What what made you what tipped you over the edge and said I need to just start my own press right now? <laughs> uh, I used to do some uh shows at this little um I used to rent out two week spans at galleries in Chelsea, in New York. And me and like 20 friends would pay $150 each to have the space for two weeks. And then we'd like have our own work in the space. So I was organizing these kind of group shows. Um, and uh, then a year later, the economy crashed and my cousin wanted to quit his uh, job to start a business where he would have space for me to have a gallery in the front. So that's how I got my first space. Like my cousin was like, Here's a gallery. I'll I'll work in the back and help you with the gallery stuff. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah, so that was cool. But then I realized that working in gallery world is uh, it's not for me. So <laughs> and, I was, and I had a full time job then too. So it wasn't really like I couldn't be uh, truly supportive of the artists that we represented because I still had work to do. Yeah. Um, was this so, when you were working at the Guggenheim? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I started the Guggenheim in 2007, opened the gallery from 2009 to 2011, and then um, worked at the Guggenheim until 2018. But that was the beginning. After those three, two and a half years at the gallery, I I wanted people to actually afford the shit I was selling, yeah. kind of. I wanted people to be able to own limited edition art in their homes. It yeah. goes in whatever form. So the books were the best way to do it. I mean, it was like going from $2,000 price to 40. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to be, I just wanted to like exist, you know, get, I, we just it. want the, we want the art out there. We, we can't do that with like four print sales in a month. It's true. Unfortunately, that does not pay the rent um, completely anyway. And so photo books too, instead of prints, I think that's like, I, I mean, I really like it and they're beautiful books and they're, Years. Yeah, they are. Um, this is like a long time ago too. This was from 2016. So look at that. You, they're all different. Um, yeah, you, you, you work a lot. I mean, you work with these artists. Really. So actually, let's talk about how you how you start relationships with artists. Uh huh. Um, oh, and this just came in the mail today, by the way. Like my gold box. I've been waiting to make like a golden <gasps> oh! box for so long. Okay, let's and talk about like this series. This series lost. So you, um, the, there are tons of different photographers who kind of tackle one city and photograph that city. And these books are really wonderful. Okay, who's, there's a complete collection now available, looks like. Yeah, they're just my, they're my copies and for the artists to look at. But like, as soon we'll have like, um, well, they're all available for pre-order. But they'll be around at the end of the month. So that's Haley's book about Las Vegas or a part of Las Vegas. 
that's Jed, my professor and kind of mentor's book. I think he'd cringe if I called him a mentor. But a lot of people, I think there's probably a lot of people on this chat right now that were kind of semi-mentored by Jed at some point. Um, and that's old New York City. So that's like the 70s, 80s in New York City, this book, Downtown. Um, we have a book by Tess Roby, a Montreal photographer and musician who's an awesome both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, this is Courtney Astalos and Michael Hicks's book uh, named The Glittering Eye, which takes place on a cruise ship. Cool. A few years ago, so that one's a timely. Those cities and a cruise ship. <laughs> Amanda, when's the last time you've been on a cruise ship? I've never been on a cruise. Will you ever go on a cruise? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, this is um, uh, Maddie and the Corda's book, a special kind of double. So this is the only lost title that's not uh, uh, site specific. This is uh, um, how many pictures are in it. The Do you have the questions open also, the question box going? They're not using the question box. That just came in on the chat, looks like. I saw that too. Yeah, cool. yeah. If you do want to ask questions, you can slide them over to the question box. But I will answer how many pictures are in the book. They're 48 page books. All of them are 48 pages plus the cover. Um, and each book probably has an average between 25 and 30 images from each artist. Um, we have Keeley's book. Did you show Keeley yet in Blue Sky? No, not yet. Keeley, you yeah, so good. This is like a, a part of, a huge part of Russia named Chukotka. Uh, or I don't know how you would pronounce that really. But, uh, <laughs> that's uh, this is Alina Van Risen's book about Bryn Mawr College, which is so nice. And... Uh, and uh, a friend of mine, Mary Lee, Marilyn Ryan, her father, Kenneth Ryan, uh, had this story about Afghanistan in the 70s before the revolution happened. Wow. Uh, and how it happened, kind of in just with photography, with old 35 Kodachrome uh, and a story. Pretty awesome. I think, I mean, the they're dope. And, oh, also, the this is a book by uh, Laurent Chevalier named Enough. And mm -hmm. this is um, Brooklyn Street Photography. Uh, Please check out the website. There's like some some goodies on there, and there's a lot of pictures of the book, so you can see a lot of our stuff. And this is a book that we just got named uh, "Big Throat" by Nat Ward. It has this cool uh, spot varnish cover shebang Beautiful. thing. That's yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, I take a lot of pictures of this on the beach. <laughs> I love the idea of taking a photo book to the park or like to the beach to read instead of a little novel or anything. Like, look at some pictures. Totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just playing around because like I have the camera and I'm trying to make a good picture of these books on the beach. It's like, I can't even enjoy the just the beautiful beach sometimes. <laughs> you need all of the all of the image saturation. Yeah, yeah. it's like being a photographer is this yeah. beautiful culture or something. <laughs> um, how do you how do you have how do you start relationships with these photographers that you work with um, through KGP? Are they are you approached or do you? Um, meet them through other photographers that you already know, or is there a combo? Any strangers from the internet? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's all, it's random, right? It's like, it's not random. It's totally, there's a lot of people that I've worked with before that we make books with, mm -hmm. um, or people that are like, we've been friends for a long time, or we've worked together in the past. But then there's the sh like people that we meet like at, uh, you know, art fairs or um, festivals or like Photo Lucida. I've met m multiple artists like uh, Pablo Lerma and Ruben Wu, both at Photo Lucida. So I think that's a really, and we've worked with both of those guys within the last two years. So shit like that, like those things are really important yeah. every way, you know, like kind of getting yourself out there in any way is a good way, you know? Yeah. Um, so what was your question? I forgot your question. Craig's question, Craig just said, oh, my question was, how do you meet photographers that you work with? Oh, um, yeah, it's pretty random. Yeah. In the future, you know, things, that was the past, but now we have a future that we have to deal with. So yes, um, everything changes now. I think yeah. within the next six months, the only way you meet people is through like emails or I, how else? Through these kind of video chats and like yeah. conversations in the back end on, on DM later, shit like that is how we're yeah. going to meet people. So Unfortunately, um, I think a festival, it might be a little, well, it'll look different, you know, but if it'll take place, probably I would imagine, but um, I don't know. Everyone's gonna have to print their photos on masks. I, that's funny you say that. My friend, uh, Mercedes Jelinek, <clears throat> she's making uh, cyanotype masks. They're oh. I'm gonna need one of those Mercedes. Oh, yeah. I told her. Yeah. I, I mean, those oh, are they're so beautiful. She has like the moon right in the center of the yeah. mask. 
Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. Okay. Somebody asked a question. It said, how do you distribute them? Yeah, that the was Chris Craig Hickman. How do you, how do you distribute mm -hmm. your books? How do we, do oh, for the next one, um, you can put, uh, you can put text that stays on top. Oh. Like you can do that now. You could say like four questions put in the question box and it will stay like right on the bottom bar. Okay. When people come in, they'll see the text. <laughs> but I'll answer this question while, while that happens. Okay. Uh, how many, uh, how do you distribute them? I don't, we don't distribute. Uh, we're, we're a limited edition press. We only make, uh, we usually make under 500 of each copy. So, or each title. So we don't usually have enough to be distributing. Plus it's just a, for me, it's like a waste of money and it's not a waste. No, not a waste. Why did I say that? It's not <laughs> a waste of money. Um, yeah, somebody else makes these masks too. I forgot her name, but I just, I, I don't want to mess up. Like they, uh, Mercedes and her, the person that's making the mask with them makes these, these kind of masks. And now they're making cyanotype, but these are the first masks we got from them some weeks ago. That's, that's one nice. thing. Sorry, how do you distribute the books? I don't. We sell 300 and then we're out of the game. We make new books. So like we try to sell to museums and people that really want them. If you want them, then they are there and then they're gone because they usually sell out within, uh, all the books usually sell out within a year, 18 months. Um, and we, you know, that we just kind of, we want to keep it, keep it fresh. Yeah. How do you market them then? Um, do you do just peer to peer, person to person emails, the people you think want them? Just directly ask them? mostly mostly that yeah i mean yeah. there's a lot of instagram stuff now because this is where the photographers have landed yeah you know, most most photographers have to be here because without this place uh it's hard to exist because people don't go to your websites pretty much that's like pretty much <sighs> such mm -hmm. yeah a, a widely accepted truth for that um it's unfortunate it's, bad, uh, yeah. um, it's definitely but, not yeah, the same. I, I wish there was a different option for photographers because this one's not really a good one i mean instagram is just we, I mean, we're using it now, but I will always talk shit about it. I mean, <laughs> they're fucking scoundrels. The whole company is a bunch of scoundrels. So it's like, kind of, not everybody, of course. I, not mean, everybody. I mean, we could do Zoom next time, but I feel like we won't have as many random hellos. Uh, I also don't think that there's a, um, hi on, I don't, I think there's a, a it's not cool to be on Zoom, man. It's like work, you know, just, it's a different mentality, I think. That's probably true. I don't know. I've been using it to like watch videos with my girlfriends. So I think it's, I've been using it socially also. It feels better. Uh, yeah. Al, hey, that's a good question. How have you been filling your time? Like, what have you been working on? Um, Before I answer that, my friend Richie said revolt or what did he say? He, he said, said protest. Yes. I mean, that would be nice, but yeah, we, I mean, at some point we're going to have to protest. I mean, yeah. because, like, we well, need what options. Are, you, are we just going to be like, uh, are we just, I, I don't want to get into that part. Also, uh, there's, <clears throat> let me pause this for a second and say, hey, folks, thank you so much for the questions. Just to the right of the comment box, there's a little box with question mark. Uh, and you can tap that and then we'll get the questions a little bit easier on our end so we don't lose any in the comments. Yeah, um, this scroll. most recent one, we'll get to that in just a second because I think that's a really good question. You're handling the questions, I don't have to do that part? No, I'll ask, I'll ask it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, well, this is a good one to start with because I'm really curious about this too. So do you have any advice for young photographers who are trying to get published and like maybe how to approach the industry? And let's consider you the industry also. I mean, I know you're not, you're, what you're doing is specifically not the standard. So can you talk a little bit about the differences? Yeah, sure. I think that a lot of uh, photography book publishers are uh, documentary based for the most part. Um, that's a lot of companies making books. And then there's like the art photography books, but there's not that many. I mean, you could count them. Um, I think that's a hard thing to, to answer because the first thing is just making the work, right? If yeah. you feel confident in the work and you show the work to people, then maybe reaching a publisher, every publisher is different. It's like every publisher is a different dude or, or, or do that. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like um, for me, I would say like, I, 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 you can send me any email and I will do my best to respond timely fashion. There are some times that it takes me a long time to respond to emails that come in that are, you know, but I will respond as much as possible to, if you have questions um, or want to show me a project, 
Um, I will get back to you. It may take some time. But, and I think that there are most of the people that in our, are in our game just want to see good work. So, um, so yeah, people will be respons responsive to your emails. To you. At least they'll say, like, we are not looking right now or something like that. But I think that every new, like, every photographer that wants to um, have a book should, of course, research books. Like, research as many books as possible. See what is being made. How do you fit into, like, what do you want your book to look like? Uh, for a publisher, um, for me in particular, like, for me, I want to know what you want to do with the book, right? Like, do you want a hardcover book? Do you want a softcover book? Do you want, how many pages do you think your project should be? How many images do you have? Do you have a lot for me to choose from as a publisher? Like, a publisher kind of acts as an editor as well. So I'm going to mm -hmm. want to see more than the things that you say are should be part of this book. Yeah. Um, how much, like, do you find that... Um more emerging artists or more established artists have are easier to work with in that regard like do you feel like younger artists fresh more emerging artists have like a more clear idea of what they're interested in doing um or do you feel like does it just change drastically from artist to artist as i suspect as we are we're just yeah. different people i think there's yeah. there's no um there's no normal yeah. it's just like it, there's no normal. I get yeah. crazy emails. <laughs> um, there's, and there's I think every publisher, not, not even publisher, like every uh, publisher or curator or um, gallery owner or museum person or whatever, we're all getting a lot of emails that are very random every day. Like it. Yeah. some make sense. Some are just like out left field, like, hi, like blank. Like, no, <laughs> no, don't send in personal emails. That, I would say that like, don't a mailing list is one thing, but don't send impersonal emails to me. Like dear, uh, I don't know. Maybe dear publisher. Maybe dear publisher would be really bad. <laughs> yeah. to, to, to KGP slash staff or yeah. something like that. That's also not the best. I understand that they don't know who's working for the place, but, but it is on my website. So there, there's little things you could do to like kind of maneuver around the like intricacies of, uh, like modern culture, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like that would keep things a little bit easier. I mean, if you, you know, some things people respond to, some people, some things no one responds to. So just, you know, yeah. kind of keep it personal. Make me believe that you want to work with me. I think that that's important. Like it's, this is all a game. It's like, this is a big ass game and you got to play the game. That's true. Some people also could call that building relationships and like genuine relationships. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I feel longer, like I mean, your that's, advice, that's a longer process. It's true, but it starts with doing your research, right? So like knowing that, like figuring out that you're actually the publisher that they want to go with. And so it's, it is daunting, I'm sure. But, but opening up those channels of communication, because you're probably going to get an answer, even if that answer is like, sorry, you're not quite the type of photographer we're working with right now. But thanks anyway, you know, I feel yeah. like that, a good advice for photographers looking to to get their work out there is just to do do your best research before you approach anybody. Um. Know, like, know where you want to fit in, at yeah. least. You know, like where, or not fit in. Like don't, you know, you don't fit in, of course, that would be like the worst. <laughs> um, where, know, at least know like what you want from it or something, you know, like you can't just be, I don't think you can be an artist now, like, that's not right. <laughs> I think that if you want to, play in the art business of it, right? We're talking about art business shit. We're not talking about the art world. The art world is everyone who wants to produce. I think that that world is pretty big. Okay. Uh, the art business, on the other hand, is this machine. It's a destructive, uh, strange place where we never have the upper hand if you don't have money. So how do you like get around not having money? Yeah. Uh, and that's not all. You have to have talent too. I mean, even if you have money, you have to have talent. So. Um, <laughs> But that stuff is kind of, I don't know, it builds slowly. You try, you apply for things, you like make yourself seen, you know, like send your images around so that the, the public that cares about images or curates images online know that you exist. I think that those things are really important. Then people may start coming to you to ask you to make a book, not you have to, like not the other way around. I think right. it's important to be like the one who's on the fucking offensive all the time. I, yeah. I think that playing defense is you can do this forever. I mean, you could, I could sit, I can sit around making photographs for 50 years, totally happy. But I think that it's important for us to like actually uh, 
we have to push the boundaries and more and now more than ever. I agree. Um, this is a this is a good lead into this question that came in, which is how is the book a good medium for the artist? That's my sister, by the way. Oh, hey! Um, <laughs> it's a, book, it's a, a good, good question. For the artist. I would I would kind of I would almost argue that what is the other medium for an artist? What has been the other medium for an artist in the past like like hundred years? Like a gallery show, exhibition, mm -hmm. an exhibition. There's exhibition. There's book. Now there's the web, but where, what else? Like kind of periodicals, um, <laughs> yeah. printed matter. So that's book. I would call that book, right? So most of photography exists in printed form in books. That's how you see photography mostly. You never see shows. I have, I have not been to a gallery. Um, that's also wrong. But I, <laughs> there's a lot of shows that I have missed, right? Like there's like, the show, the exhibition is like a, it's a, it's a weird part of the game because it's like there's so much importance in it. And I really do. I love having an exhibition like that's it feels really great but for me making a book feels great for longer mm -hmm. and it costs way I mean for, and it should cost you le like kind of less also I mean in a way um, yeah so I think that uh, the only other ways to get around are having shows and we are not offered those I mean most photographers never get a show or not never but like it's very difficult for, for photographers to get shown. I mean, I, I know many people that are worthy of being shown at museums across the world that never have shows because people aren't looking out for them. The curators aren't looking for uh, most of us. Yeah. Curators aren't looking, I don't think. Mm. I blame, I, sorry, please, next question. <laughs> okay, um, the next question is, will it pop up here? Can you see that? I can see, uh, Zora. Yeah. How do you navigate the, uh, the compromise between making your own artwork and publishing? Ooh, that beat, you beat me to it. Mm. To uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's a, it's not, for me, I don't think it's a compromise. Yeah. Um, I think it's all time. Yeah, there's a lot of time. It's all time, but usually I'm not needing to make a photograph to think about how I want to be making photographs. Mm -hmm. The photographs that make, uh, in Queens are kind of, I just go outside when I want to shoot and try to make something out of nothing. Yeah. Um, in the studio, it takes such little time in comparison to like making a book or a project in book form. Those things take months and months, but, uh, but a studio visit is still going to take an hour to, for me to photograph you and I can get the post done in another hour. So we have a finished product pretty quickly. So I, it, it lets me do both in a very timely fashion. It just sounds very efficient. <laughs> and of really course, I don't sleep until like two o'clock in the morning. After that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, cool. Let's see here. I like how the tree is coming out of your head. It's really quite nice. The trees and my art. <laughs> I'm trying to get in. I should have gotten a stand. That's the one thing I didn't get from my phone. Somebody else um, asked the question, and not the yeah, question. Yeah, there was a question in the comments: is who typically writes the essays in your books, and how do you choose them? Whoa, that's a goodie. Um, the small books usually don't have essays. Like when they're about forty-eight pages, we usually just go with some artist text. Or if it's a poetry book like Nat's book, uh, it's more there. They have the writing is inherent, kind of, mm -hmm. to the project made by the artist. Uh, with I think I think if you're making a monograph like these, like Laurent's book, and uh, yeah, if you're making this type of book, it is it is helpful to have essayists, uh, one or two. I think that for my books, I don't, I never want it to feel too textbooky. Like there's a lot of photography, like some of the biggest, most beautiful photography books of all time, are like they begin as textbook. There's like a 20 page <laughs> essay, little pictures of references, shit like that. Like it looks like it came from a museum. Yeah. This is not. I'm not that. I'm not that publisher. These are individual projects. These are monographs. So, um, so for La in in this case, Laurent's book, we have two writers. One who is writing poetry throughout, named Doc Doctor Jamila Leascott, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. I don't know if I did. And an essay by Cyrus Aaron. Um, and you know, they are as important to this book as Laurent's photographs. We've and Laurent. Had, like had these people in mind when he was uh, thinking about making a book for the project. So usually I ask the artist to think about what, what type of writer they'd want for a project. And then we go from there. 
Um, if I have a contact that can reach somebody that can reach somebody, then we connect them that way. Um, if it's just, it's another thing. It's another kind of like, who do I know? Who can I reach? And who would be, a, who would really want to do this thing with us? Cool. There's another question that came in, in the comments, um, which is what are the ways in which you as an independent book publisher seek to subvert the assumptions of the larger art industry? How? Subversive. Well, we, we have books made with uh, black people as the authors, so that's one. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so we, we I, you know, I want to I wanna make books that could uh, change like a, you know, change a, I don't know, not change a life, that's too like crazy, but like, a, um, <laughs> you can hear all that, like I can even whisper and you can hear all that shit, that's crazy, this is like a good, <laughs> good microphone. Um, realistically, I mean, I, the question, I'll have to get the, the real question again, I'm just going to go and talk about, wait, actually, let me read this question again. All right, it's like, in the comments. This is, this is the big one, man. How are you subverting the arts industry? Like, how, how are you different from these, like, from the, from the industry? Like, what's... Um, maybe people, some people don't know kind of like the hoops that big publishers make you jump through, which is front thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. for your own project. I mean, in that case, in that way, I think that there are, you know, more, most of the publishers you've ever heard of definitely charge you to make a book. Right? Yeah. I can't say that I don't, I don't charge people to make books in, in, but, um, I ask them to do work for that, right? Like I ask the artist to find people to buy the books up front like if you can make 80 percent or 90 percent of a pre-order then i'll cover the rest uh for the book so we get quote like yeah i talk to artists and we say like what do we want from this project what do we want it to look like we get a quote we see how much that costs um and you know if it, let's say a book costs six grand to make i know it's going to cost fourteen hundred dollars to ship so that means you need to make about eight thousand dollars with proofs to make the product i mean uh you can make a hardcover book for that i mean so like eight grand in, which means that we need to sell at $40, 200 books mm -hmm. to be able to make the book. I need you to make 150, uh, 150 sales. I, and I can cover the rest and then cover the rest of the production run and, uh, and like show it around for as many, like for years on my own that I'll, I will just do it. Like that's what I'm doing. So, um, I don't, I forgot the question again. I keep forgetting the question. What? Oh, like the, oh yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. the question. So okay. uh, <laughs> um, that's one way that it's different with me, but I don't think it's different that I'm not the only person that works on that model. It's just, yeah. this is the way I think that I want to work in this way. Yeah. Uh, also from now on, every submission we have will be uh, a, a sale. So I don't want to ask people for money and they get nothing in return ever again. So I think everything we do in the future is going to be, uh, you pay for the product that your book would be, but if you don't win, you just get the product. You just didn't win. So it's like kind of like you're buying a book and you're getting a submission for free. That's what we're doing now. Like this is, this is kind of the the new world way to do this. I think like we have to be giving. Like I want to be giving the books to people. I don't want to just be. I don't want people's money. That's not why I'm doing this. Yeah. Like I just want to make the products, um, and still and be able to like maybe like, live too, like. <laughs> enough to make reasonable. Them, them, you know? yeah that sounds reasonable uh, so that's one those are a few different the ways that i consider myself like slightly different than most publishers but the books themselves i mean i don't think i, I mean i'm fine i think we're finding the best projects in the game i think we mm -hmm. make books by the, the best photographers working and i will put these books up against other photographers any day of the week you do you do rep your people hard for I good reason. More in a tw I hope that we can tell a better story in a 48 page book than most publishers would tell in 200 pages. I love that. It's keeping it fresh, you know, like photo books. I mean, I honestly, working at the gallery, I am going to say, I don't know if I should say this or not, but we get, we get people returning books to us a lot. Um, and we have a library, a resource library at the gallery, which is a tremendous and wonderful resource. Mm -hmm. And we love getting submissions for that. But it is interesting to see how um, some of these old, old tomes will say, like the really thick ones with all the writing in the front, nobody really wants those on their 
on their bookshelves anymore. It's taking up some precious real estate. Um, and that's <laughs> not that these people aren't collecting books still. Like they are, they're definitely still buying books from us too, but they're like much yeah. different. It's a, it's a different kind of a vibe. People aren't collecting shit. I mean, like there's, we're in trouble. If you, if you, if we think that people are collecting photography like they were once, yeah. and even then there was only like a hundred people being collected in the first place. And there's still only probably yeah. a few hundred photographers in the world that are being collected in a real way. I could be wrong about all these numbers, but from what I'm seeing, it seems like there's a really small fucking tunnel and we're not fitting in it right now. So um, yeah, the world's crazy. I mean, you gotta do I think we do everything ourselves. We gotta do everything ourselves. Yeah. Support your local independent publishers. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. The residency tote is beautiful. You should check it out on the website. Oh, I have it here. That's right. This is like a this is like a <laughs> plug. I'm plugging my own shit on here. There you go. New York City, baby. Cool. <laughs> uh oh, this is a question I have um about your art collection, your own art collection. I know you're not at your own home right now, but mm -hmm. can you describe your f most, I don't know, describe the first piece of art in your collection that comes to mind? In my art collection, that's yeah. what uh... It doesn't even have to be a photograph, I, anything. I have some, I got some good shit, man. Like we, I got like a, um, there's a photographer named Johara Al Saad and we had uh, two of her works in a summer show at the gallery when I had that. And it was like, a, it's a 30 by 40 inch. It, the work, her work is so beautiful. And I, I haven't seen new work from her in a while, but the, I can't explain it. So I'm just going to talk about a different artwork that most people would probably know more than Johara's work. Um, there, do you know this photographer, MOCP used to run this print program. I don't know if they still do it. Uh, Museum of the uh, Contemporary Somebody can write what MLCP means in the <laughs> I don't know the name of their museum, but it's in Chicago, <laughs> it's a beautiful space, and it's called MLCP. And they um, used to have this print program where you'd buy like a $300 16 by 20. And that was like at that point where like there was a lot of these limited edition prints going around and the $300 print would get you like an eight by 10. Yeah. And they, were, they had some good names and the shit was 300 bucks. And they were like, I got a Michael Wolf print from them. Ooh. Rest in peace, Michael, Michael Wolf. Yeah. Um, uh, and that that print is awesome. I got a Zanelli Moholy straight from Africa uh, because my friend saw that a gallery was selling a limited. We, we, I can't afford like an actual art, like prints that cost like thousands of dollars. That's, I can't do that. So my like my my level is hundreds. So I try to find my photography uh, in the hundreds. Yeah, your sister says yeah. the ice cream truck photo. What do you mean? What is that? What, I don't know. What, does that, she said the ice cream truck photo, like that might ring a bell. I kind of want to know what that is. Oh, but that's my photo. So it's like, it's oh. not like something that I've collected. I, I made a picture of a Mr. Softy truck. Like oh, 15. Recently. The one you just, uh, did you just recently post it? That shit is from like 2004. I recognized it from having posted it recently. Yeah, um, yeah. That is a beautiful picture. It's super dramatic. I love Queens, man. Yeah. You find some gems in Queens if you walk around for like long enough every day. Um, what um, what is it about it? Like what what can you how can you describe it in a couple of words for somebody who's never been there? The picture is just dope, man. I don't know. Like it's just kind of like for me that picture is like oof. I, it was a good night. It was hot. It was summer. Yeah. I was with some cool ass people, and we you know we we're just walking around. That was before like I I don't think I could afford shit. I mean I definitely wasn't drunk. I was probably not full. And we're just walking around, just chilling for hours in the hot ass park at night in New York City, and saw that Mr. Softy truck. Of course, I was walking around with like a ten pound tripod and a <laughs> Mamiya like Mamiya six seven. Fucking ridiculous. Tell the people what they want to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, real long exposure for that. So it was a classic though. I love that picture. It's fucking yeah. Yeah, Queen baby for real. QB baby. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, wow, we're we're rounding out for um, oh, yeah. Are we done with questions? No more, no more question and answer. We so what's going on with you? Doing? My dad says hi. Hi, dad. Uh, <laughs> your dad is in your in your abode correct currently, or is no? Just he's he's watching remotely. I mean, he's watching from his house. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Yeah. So how is it going out in Portland? I mean, New York City got pretty pretty bad but did it get uh i know that you have the the people storming the capitol do you want to oh. talk about this for me really quick 
we're not I don't want to talk about that <laughs> that's so disappointing <laughs> because I feel like the the social distancing right seems to be working we're sheltering in place like um and Portland's the biggest city in the state so this is where definitely the most of the cases are but I think overall um it's been pretty mild so there's talk you know I mean the, there's the western states packed or whatever they're calling it now um so the unroll process will be really interesting and I'm curious to know I think because um countries like Germany and South Korea have already opened some of their museums and galleries I think I am hopeful that um, we'll be able to open to the public like maybe a little bit before a movie theater for example um mm -hmm. so that's going to be really good um we've extended our John Baldessari retrospective um through july which is great oh, good. yeah so so yeah things we're just plugging along i think as usual yeah internet. yeah and just living in the internet um and hope you know we've got 45 years of photography exhibitions and they're all on our website we actually um craig hickman if he's still watching thank you for scanning all those slides for us um, thousands multiple hundreds for sure <laughs> many years from the uh 80s and early 90s so yeah so queens, baby, yes. queens forever queens forever yes. we got a lot of queens fans in this audience here it's true we got some supporters here I, that's I think. right i see cat del bono hi um we got a thank you which i'll second you're such a um you're such a just staunch supporter uh, of the art of the artists that you work with and the arts in general. I mean, I know as a blue sky board member, you've always got some really good ideas and like you're tuned in, in a way that's just really cool because you've got your fingers in all these different industries. So you kind of got your eyes on everybody and it kind of helps us. It helps us. I feel like a lot in a way. I think I, I definitely don't have my eyes on everybody. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff happening. Like, okay. I, that's fair. I think we have, you know, we're so kind of America based with the way we're doing our business that it's probably going to hurt us in the future. I mm. mean, or it hurts us now. I mean, it hurts us already. Like, I don't know much about any photographer um, outside of this country. I mean, I, if they, if I've heard about them, then they're pretty popular. You know, I don't know any like, yeah. like coming out of college student in any other country in the in the world besides America. So I think that I do have a very uh, a tight, you know, that there, I'm, I'm not as broad as I would love to be. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's hard, you know, I, I don't know how I would even get that much time to do that much research, but like, I'm definitely trying as much, like as hard as I can yeah. <laughs> now. Um, this actually, that's a good segue into my next question and maybe one of my last ones and I'll let audience members kind of have a last chance to chime in in that little question box to the right of the comment box. Um, mm -hmm. And my question for you is, with all of us going online with our programming, like literally every museum, every gallery, every zoo, every everybody, um, how are you dividing your, like how are you choosing how to spend your internet time? And do you feel like you're spending more time online or less time online than you did pre-pandemic? Being home is really nice. I do a lot of traveling when I'm not like, uh, you know, when we're not on, in exile. Yeah. Uh, so I feel really kind of, very happy about just kind of spending a little bit of time. I feel like it's kind of like a residency in a way because I don't have to, my job is uh, here in the house. So yeah. I don't really have to leave so much. It's, it's not so, it's not that bad for me. Like I, I feel like it's worse for so many people um, yeah. that like I get to like make books. It's like totally, I feel, my wife works for the ACLU and uh, she is doing hard work, like actual like hard work that affects people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that that stuff is what's important. Like we get to like um, excite, or I don't know if excite is the right word, but we, we hope to um, help the public in the way that we know how to. And that's all we have. I mean, yeah. like, that's what I'm here for. I want to like be culturally relevant. You're an inspiration. I feel like that's the word you were looking for. You, you and you are. Yeah, I agree. South Korea in the house too. I see that South Korea. <laughs> that's awesome. I think yeah, that's not for real from South Korea. That's cool, man. It is cool. What time is it in South Korea right now? 
Did we miss any early ask questions? I don't think so, but there is one more big biggie that just came in. You ready for you ready for that? Wait, before you do that, right when this ends, it's going to tell you how many people were total on this thing, and I want to know exactly how many people were once signed into this thing because I think yeah. it's going to be like if it's over three hundred, then we're like. I feel like we did a good job. That's and nice. I think it's going to be way over that. I think it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, pl the question, please. It's been an hour. Hey, it's 10.50 a.m. in South Korea. Nice. Nice. Okay. Didn't even have to Google that. Uh, Thanks for watching us in the middle of your morning. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so we've got this, this massive question. How do you see the photo review industrial complex coming out of this pandemic? <laughs> Boom. I love that question. I love that question. Ooh. Because we um, do, you even said yourself, you've met a lot of artists through these photo reviews, but I know that they are just like really tedious processes for the artists. Um, and so this is an interesting question. I'd love to hear your answer. Are you frozen? No, nah, I'm not frozen. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna X this question out and think about how to answer this without getting in trouble. Okay. Um, how do you see the photo? So there's too many of them. Yeah. I don't like the, it, there's, I feel like there's too many of them. Uh, so maybe let maybe there'll be less of them. I, I think with less will be more. We will we will have better opportunities that are lasting and actually are worth the expense of doing them. Yeah. If there's less of them, I can say for a fact that like I had a really good time in Center Santa like Center was that what we had Santa Fe. That's a goodie. Like Photo Lucida is a goodie, man. I mean we've I've had good luck with Photo Lucida. Yeah. I think at every Yes, I have had good luck there. Um, I, and you know, I've had good luck in a lot of places. Like we, I'm, there's great artists everywhere in this country. I've only been to places like to ones here. I know there's some in Arl as well. I'm sure that's awesome. I hear really good things about Arl. Um, but that complex is just like the art art fair complex. You know, they will probably ha like you know they will have to dwindle a little bit and then they'll kind of maybe go away or get stronger or actually have. I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go. I'm I'm very happy that that's not my business. I think <laughs> it's just like, that business is very stressful. And I'm very happy that there's someone else that's willing, because it is important for people. I mean, those are usually nonprofits running those things. Yeah. They, are, they, they cost a lot, but they cost a lot. I mean, yeah. like, that's how it is. Like, those things cost a lot to do. I appreciate them. Um, I've been to many. And I've been, I've tried to do the best I can. And all the reviewers that go to them try to do the best they most of their viewers that go to them try to do the best they can. Um, and you just have to hope that you get good reviewers. And if you don't force them, you make, you find them outside of the room and you tell them to fucking look at your work. And if they say no, then they're, they're fucked up. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the answer. It's not a, it's probably not a good answer, but um, yeah. I mean, if the, if you think the business is not good for you, never, never, never give money to it that's good advice um okay let's do one more question uh to take us out and that's gonna i wanted to go on a like more uplifting note so i'm wondering if there's anything that i mean a little, a little bit maybe <laughs> What is there, what is there anything about sheltering in place and their quarantine lifestyle that you actually like a lot and would like to like carry with you into the next phase of our lives um, do research if you can learn from people like learn like get your new business going I think that's the biggest thing like hmm. no one's going to save us yeah. government's not going to save us they're not even going to try to they're going to try to take away our health care and shit like no one's going to save us you have to do everything yourself if you want to be an artist you're going to have to like really push and now may be the time because they're, everyone's at home. If now this is probably the best time that you'd ever reach a curator. I mean, they're definitely at home. So like, <laughs> you know, the time to email them your projects, email the curator, email the people that buy shit, email yeah. like you know, email random rich people and see if they give you ten thousand dollars or some shit. I don't know. Hey. Like, I've had a, I've been like, yo, Oprah, can I get a milli? Just one, just if, one. Well, if Oprah is watching, I would cry. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> really maybe. That's all. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. I, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of, uh, we're going through it. We're going to figure it out. I think 
you're gonna have to be if you want to try to make it like i'm sorry that's a wrong way to start that sentence <laughs> um, there's a lot of opportunity right now and if you think that you have a uh, an edge in one of those go for it yeah. if it, as long as it doesn't cost you your as long as it doesn't cost you your life or your your real money yeah. go for it yeah. nice Thank you so much. I'm going to take this minute to plug the fact that Blue Sky accepts submissions for free um, a photo based work, but all the time, anytime. And I know our exhibition committee, they're meeting via Zoom and it's going really well, I've heard. So um, submit your work. This is the moment on our website. Um, so thank you so much, Chris. I mean, the, the space is huge, it's beautiful. Huge. Yeah. yeah. And do We're going to open. Too. Yeah. No there will be. Show no 20 pictures that go straight around the wall in the same, like, yeah, let's get fucking interesting with these shows. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Show us what you got folks. Show us what you got. We would love to see it. Um, and then I also, so Chris, just besides that, thank you so much. And I would like to just remind, or maybe not remind, but tell people that you're going to be doing your, an, an interview series too. Well, yes, I'm, listening. Back in a second. I'm listening. Um, is it because I'm curious why haven't you done a Portland one of lost have I been showing myself backwards this whole time yeah fuck me it's okay that's <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> have you um do you change that how do you change well, I'm just that asking, I don't know if you can change that Portland uh, nope. no now you just do the other way that's what's up all right there must right. be a way what kind of shit is this? We'll figure it out for the next oh, one, which is Chris is hosting. Anyway, right. uh, and uh, we're gonna... I, you I forgot your that? question, but uh, I'm sorry. What was, was your there... question? Really quick before it cuts off. Okay, we've been talking over each other for a minute, but you're about to host um, another series of interviews. And so I was wondering if you just wanted to talk about that real quick. We'll tell everybody to tune in. Um, but first, check out the schedule on our website. Uh, yes, the schedule for the the, the futures is uh, on your website, my website, not my Instagram page yet, but tomorrow will be on there. Same. And yeah, the next the next is my my homie Zora J Murph. Next Friday at nine p.m. We're doing the okay. nine p.m. shift. Uh, right. Actually, is the next one the ICP thing? Somebody just said that. No, that's not. No, next. I think is the next one. Yeah, I'm doing an thing with ICP at one p.m. next Thursday. That costs money, and that's with my homie Nelson right here. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's promoting it in text form. <laughs> Love so, it. Yeah, I think it's it's a three day, one hour every for three days. It's gonna be dope. We're gonna have a good conversation about like how to make a photo book, um, cool. and how to make oh. it like so that it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg on that. So hook, hit up ICP and Nelson, and then um, and on Friday we'll be back here on the Blue Sky. I'll be talking to Zora J Murph, one of my favorite people in the world. Can't wait! I can't wait. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. This was great. I, we'll, we'll talk about this. Yeah. I, it's, I'm bad at plugging, but like, uh, we'll have time for it. Yes. Portland. Peace, y'all. Bye. See you later.